Welcome to our first lesson in five part series of biology. Today's program deals with processes of life. Thank you for joining us. After watching this video lesson, you should be able to compare range of biological processes in nature between living and non-living organisms or things. Please take a look at these examples of living and non-living things. Living things include all different kinds of animals and plants. Non-living things include things such as rocks, buildings, and furniture. From these examples, what differences can you figure out from living and non-living things exactly? Let's see. To understand the differences between living things and non-living things, we have to look at their different characteristics. All th living things need food in order to live. The process by which organisms obtain nutrients from food is called nutrition or feeding. And this is the first characteristic of living things. For example, human beings and animals feed on different types of food. These include meat, milk, eggs, vegetables, fruits, and the like. And in the case of animals, they eat grass, meat, and so on. Plants also use oxygen and water to live and grow, just like other living organisms. But plants make their own food using sunlight and water. Now, Non-living things are quite different from living organisms because they do not feed. They do not need food to exist. Eat, eat, eat. Mom, is not eating. Living organisms also have to respire or breathe in order to survive. You know, when air is prevented from getting into or out of our lungs, we will suffocate and die. As humans or animals, we cannot stay for long without oxygen, otherwise we'll die. We need it for breathing or respiration. Why we sweat after exercising? Actually, when the food we eat is broken down and used in our body, it results in the formation of metabolic waste products, which must then be eliminated from the body. This process is known as excretion, and it's very important for the body to free itself from toxic substances. And we do this by sweating. Let's see how animals reproduce. Chicken hatch eggs. Goats and other mammals give birth to live ones. Plants also reproduce new ones. The ability of living organisms to produce new individuals of their own kind is known as reproduction. Living organisms are also capable of movement. Again, 
something that non-living things cannot do. They cannot move themselves, but have to be moved by someone else. We can describe movement as an action of changing position. Living organisms can move from one place to another. Look here. Humans and animals crawl, walk, and run. Insects fly and soar birds. The last characteristic of living organisms which we will discuss today is growth. Do you know what growth means? Well, this is what all of us do. We are born as babies and soon start getting bigger. We increase both in size and height. Do you remember the newborn we had at the beginning of our lesson? Even the little one grew up so fast. He quickly grew into a child who matures and become an adult. All too soon, they get old again and life speeds to an end. The old ones die and are constantly replaced by new lives. Now viewers, in this lesson, we discussed the main characteristics of living things which distinguish them from non-living things. We looked at nutrition, respiration, excretion, reproduction, growth, and movement. Viewers, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. In next program, we will be talking about biology laboratory rules and safety in our environment. Until then, goodbye and take care.